People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, a.k.a. PETA, was a group that advocated for animal rights. It was founded by Ingrid Newkirk and Alex Paleko in 1986. In their time and their day, they might have been heroes. But today, they become what they fought against. They are responsible for the deaths of thousands of healthy and innocent cats and dogs. They're operated by by a bunch of mentally ill, self-proclaimed activists who go out and try to rescue animals from these lawful facilities. PETA is a joke, a meme, and a terrible one at that. Many of you might have seen their unholy parody games where they attack iconic franchises like Pokemon, Super Mario, and others. When they're not busy making these god-awful games, PETA's busy euthanizing thousands of animals. They say that it's because no one wants them. Ironically enough, PETA's founder once admitted to putting down thousands of animals per day back when she was working shelter jobs. They've even openly admitted that they want to kill animals. In the case of Born Free USA versus Norton, their, their own counsel said to a judge in an open courtroom, quote, given the choice, plaintiffs would rather see the elephants dead than in a zoo. Now let's just think about that for a sec. I've seen people compare PETA to the abolitionist movements, the people who were helping the slaves back in the, in the mid-1800s. And they were freeing the slaves from their shackles and from the will of their masters. Now, I'm no historian, but I'm pretty sure that the abolitionists didn't, didn't euthanize all the slaves that they freed. Jesus. They think that these animals are suffering by being pets. But let me ask you this. These animals, whom PETA claims are unwanted, are sick, are dying. They don't seem to be suffering. They seem to be. And if they're alive, then that's all the better. Because if they go with PETA, you know, they, get, they freaking die. Insane. He's it. Anyway, speaking of which, their rate of euthanasia is through the roof. According to the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Customer Services, in 2018, PETA had, they admitted 2,512 animals to their shelter. Now, how many of those did they euthanize? Well, let me just clue you in on it. The vast majority of them, at least two thirds. 1,798 of them. The report also said, actually, that's probably more close to three fifths now that I think of it. Maybe even four. Whatever. The report also said that one of the animals died while in custody. So that means that 713 other animals were lucky enough to be adopted out or transferred out of, out of PETA's so called shelter. Now, let's compare that to every other shelter in Virginia of that same year. The report stated that, that in a combined total, the shelters of Virginia received 241,106 animals, and they put down 27,616. Now, I know that is a lot more than PETA. You know, and that's true. It is a lot more in number. But the, but the difference that PETA only received a fraction of what all the other shelters combined have received. And if you get into the math statistics of it, this means that PETA put down 72% of the animals they received, whereas every other shelter, in a grand combination, only put down 12%. All this goes to show is that PETA's shelters are nothing more than slaughterhouses. In 2017, they even went so far as to kidnap a nine-year-old girl's little chihuahua because they thought it was unattended. Now, according to state law, they were supposed to wait for a minimum of up to five days before they could put the dog down. But they didn't even do that. Imagine the tears that were on this poor little girl's face when she heard that her beloved pet, who wasn't in any pain or had any illness, was put down. The family took Peter to court over this. And even though the group denied the allegations, of course they freaking would, they ended up paying $50,000 in a settlement. Well, around 50000 
Just imagine how much of an emotional and a financial toll this must have been on the entire family, especially that poor little girl. It's just, they, de- they need to be brought back to court. They need to be charged for every instance of animal cruelty that they've committed. You could even make the case these people are legitimately insane. In recent years, Peters began taking a more uber-vegan stance on issues like hunting, fishing, and the fur trade. Now, before I get into this, I just want to say that I have no problem with vegans. You know, if you're doing it for health reasons, or, or you just feel bad for the animals, and you can't bring yourself to, you know, to actually eat meat, you know, that's fine. You know, I won't, I won't begrudge somebody for, for living the lifestyle they choose. But it's when they try to force that lifestyle on me and on others. When they go around protesting, doing these little hunger strikes, protesting outside of somebody's favorite restaurant and yelling at you for eating meat, that's just going to inspire me to do it all the more, just to piss these people off. But anyway, getting getting back to it. These uber vegans are the ones who are going to these farms and these slaughterhouses. There was one instance where a, gr- where a group of so-called animal rescuers went to a duck slaughterhouse and chained themselves up, up to a to a machine called the death machine. It's literally called the death machine. They put these restraints around their necks and locked themselves in. Now somehow. At some point, this machine was accidentally turned on, and a guy you know, had his neck pinned against a wall. His face got all red, and you know, it seemed like he was having trouble breathing. I could tell he was in some serious distress there. They actually had to find the, the right key you know, for his specific lock, because they all had different locks. Imagine, just imagine you know, that this... How could they not expect something like this to happen? You do, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And this is what almost happened. That man almost died. <sighs> but anyway, in another instance, there was a group of uber vegans who broke into a, into a farmhouse at night. They, they kidnapped more than 100 rabbits. And they either killed or severely injured just as many in the escape attempt. Only 16 of them could actually be saved. You could even see blood on that girl's face. You know, the one who was in the video. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Anyway. These these incidents are only proof that, that PETA is run. They've become... They have more in line with these uber vegan protesters than you think. Peter's killing all these animals. And these people are doing the same. If they're not killing themselves first. <clears throat> but even more so, Peter's also been attacking they've been attacking a number of video game franchises for, for doing what they believe to be animal abuse. They've been attacking Super Mario, Pokemon, and the Assassin's Creed, and even Animal Crossing. Now, with Mario, you know, I've seen that it's because it's because they have this power up in some of the in some of the in some of the newer games called the Tanuki suit, where Mario dons this big this big brown suit with these little fox ears. He's got the little raccoon tail on him. And as it turns out, the tanuki is actually a, a Japanese animal that's known to be skinned for its, you know, it's known to be skinned and have its meat around. But Mario's is wearing a suit; he's not wearing the skin. And with Pokemon, you know, they're having, you're able to battle Pokemon with, with your Pokemon. So to them, that's probably the same as dog fighting somehow. With Assassin's Creed 4, there are actual, you know, there is, you know, there's whaling missions in, in both Assassin's Creed 4 and Assassin's Creed Rogue that you can do as side activities. You know, and they don't, 
And I, I'll admit I do feel bad for the whales and the sharks you know, when I'm plunging all these spears into them. But at the end of the day, you have to realize this is just a game. And to be, and to be completely honest, I appreciate the historical accuracy because men made their livelihoods on, the, on these kinds of things. As for Animal Crossing, well, it's about animals. You get to interact with them. And somehow, in Peter's deranged, insane mind, it somehow translates to abuse. To use a more recent example, Peter's, Peter's latest stunt was in Animal Crossing New Horizons, you know, where they went around this little museum that you can set up, and they started shouting, empty the tanks, to try to, you know, to try to free the fish that were in the tanks, as if that was actually going to do anything. They were just running around like a bunch of idiots. And if that's not enough for you, there was also, there was also a hashtag called Blathers is Canceled. You know, trying to, Blathers, of course, is the little owl guy who owns the museum. And they're trying to cancel him somehow. Now, I just want to imagine how this would play out for a sec. You know, I, I'd imagine them calling Nintendo, saying, hey, we want this Blathers guy canceled for animal abuse. And then somehow it ends up getting to Doug Bowser somehow. Because he, you know, he knows that his interns aren't going to be able to deal with these people. They're just going to keep calling him. So he decides to deal with it himself. And, and what he says is legendary. Your, your brain is in another castle. Before he hangs up on him. It's insane, just like them. But, in, but on a more serious note, these policies they have, these things they do, they're trying to cancel a mass of pixels, and coding, and character model. Hey, hey. They, they're not grasping at straws. They're grasping at the whole package to try to freaking... Getting back to the real world, though, there are people in this world who want to abuse animals. You know, all these crush videos, and I even heard of this Korean ASMR YouTuber who was known for mutilating squids and octopuses in her videos. You can see those poor guys flailing around in sheer agony after she cut them up. But the thing is that she didn't cut them up, you know, lethally. Just enough to cause sheer agony. Cutting off their tentacles or parts of their heads, but not their brains. Or, you know, or even cutting up their nerves. If they could feel it all. And she's just laughing at it through it all. The worst part about what she's doing is that it ain't even illegal in South Korea. This is the same country where they where they sell dog meat out on the street, so it shouldn't be surprising. But anyway, the same is also true in Japan. In they have an, don't get me wrong, they have animal animal rights laws, but they only extend to, to domestic pets like cats and dogs. Fish aren't covered. Now, does Peter seem to know or care about this? Well. So far, I haven't seen it. They might... I know they have offices in Asia, so they might be on on record trying to deal with these issues themselves. And I know there are a number of animal rights groups in South Korea, you know, so that's a plus, you know, if they're not like PETA, anyway. But in terms of this specific situation, you know, they, I haven't heard a single word from figure that being an international group, they'd look into these things. Of course, when you're busy putting down all those dogs, I guess it does get hard to check, to check the internet. To check all these things. But anyway, my point is this. PETA is a flash mob. They're out for shock value alone. They want to get people's attention. They want to spread their agenda. And they don't care if they have to kill hundreds or thousands of animals if it helps save a few. 
these people are insane. If you ask me, I say the sooner that their organization is shut down, the sooner we can get on to tackling real animal abuse issues instead of just complaining about hunting or fishing or anything like that. Let, let new animal rights advocates rise from their ashes. I'm Mr. J. Thank you for listening.